This video is to introduce my version 2 ATM macro system, uh, as well as supporting integration with Casper CG, uh, support for any of the different firmware versions you might run on your ATM mixer. Uh, it primarily introduces the idea of using XK range of XKeys products from PI Engineering. They're very cost effective panels. They're available in a variety of different types. Uh, the two types we're using here are three X keys, 24 button panels, one 12 with a joystick. Uh, all of them are available for less than $200. So it makes for a very cost effective solution. Uh, they're modular, you can blank out buttons, you can add buttons of varying colors. But the most useful feature they have is they have a red and blue button specific backlights and with that feature we can really make a mixing surface that gives back feedback as well as just providing a set of keys so it's far better than just using a standard keyboard. Uh, the way we've got ours laid out here uh, we have program preset buttons along the bottom, a set of macro buttons along the top and on this side we have a transition panel uh, with upstream key control, downstream key control here and then these buttons are for controlling the joystick which we'll cover later and is also covered in my manual. So because we don't want to generate an absolutely gigantic panel uh, we've doubled up in a common way of using a shift to access certain functions. So if I want to go from black to bars I you hold the shift key down and press bars. Uh, the same is true with my with with the colour and the second colour or more usefully uh, with the media player so if we select media player 1 we see the fill for media player 1 but if we hold the shift key down and press the same button we get the key signal for that, that input and again with an external renderer like Casper we've done that on the SDI 1 and 2 so you get the fill on SDI 1 and the key on SDI 2 what we've got available to cut between, if we just look at them, uh, we've got a view of the controlling computer so you can see the Blackmagic software as well as my macros application running in the background there. Uh, we've got a fashion video that one of our customers kindly allowed us to use for this demonstration. And we've got a couple of very short loops, flowers with a mostly blue background and flowers with a mostly green background just so we can differentiate what we're looking at. Okay, so if I just quickly talk about the, the general features of the, the mixer, if, if we want to cut between SDI4, our flowers, and let's say put bars on preview, then we just hit the cut button. Um, uh, you can hold the shift key down and hit cut and then you'll get an auto on auto. So the cut button can be used with two for multiple functions and potentially you could get away with just using two panels in skip having the rest of it completely if all you wanted to do was cut cameras up. Uh, the second panel gives you all the functions you'd normally expect from a transition control. So if I want to switch to a dip transition, uh, I just hit dip and then I can hit auto and it dips to one of the color sources. Uh, wipe or wipe across. Uh, we've got, we've exposed the flip button on there as well so that you can flip forwards and backwards. And obviously you can just hit reverse and just do it backwards. Um, upstream key control appears up here so if I want to put key 1 on air I just tap the key 1 on air and it's on air if I want to put it into the next transition I put it in key 1 and then hit auto and it functions as you would expect um, and you could potentially take the background out and just wipe the your still store on and off mix it on and off is probably a nicer solution So, relatively simple, basic functions that you'd expect on any mixer. On the far panel, we've got downstream key control, so we can tie our downstream keys, we can put it directly on air, or we can auto it. We've also got a fade to black button. The joystick buttons will be covered in another video. The way we've implemented macros within our system is we've used an open source library called Lua. Lua is a scripting tool, it's very easy to learn, it uses very few functions and it's widely used in game engines, 
and VLC, primarily because it's one of the fastest scripting tools around, which makes it perfect for usage with ATM. So to illustrate a very simple macro, um, I just want to, to show this. If we put our two sorts of flowers on program and preset, um, and what I want to do is I want to cut to black and then slow fade up to what was on, on preview and then obviously I want my program to be back on preview. Now that's quite a lot of functions to do within the software so we've designed a simple macro to do it and if we just watch that macro happen if I press the button it cuts to black and then fades up to the other source and then moves what was on program to preset and it doesn't matter what what transition mode I'm in at the time if I'm wiping between the two sources or I'm wiping in general then when I run my macro it will change the type of transition that's using, execute the macro and then go back to what it was before. And if we look at the macro to see how that's done, we can find the black transition. If we look at how that macro is constructed, we can see that it starts out by recording the old program and the old transition mode and then immediately sets the input, the program input to be black. It then sets the transition type to mix, which is what we're going to use to mix back from black to our new source. We then record the old mix rate in case the system has got a mix rate recorder different to what we're going to be using. We then set the transition rate to be about a second and a half, 37 frames, uh, and we hold on black for another third of a second. We then execute the fade from black back to our, our source. We then wait for that transition to occur and we then set the preview input to be what was on the program input. That completes the, the transition. Uh, we then set the transition rate at, or the mix rate and the transition type back to what they were before, ensuring that after running the macro everything is, is the way it was. So if you're worried that this looks like too much of a program at all, what we've done to try and make it easy for people to learn, learn the macroing system is we've enabled a record macro function. So in the software, if we come down here and hit record, what it will do is it will create a brand new macro marked recording on the left hand side. And then anything you do on the mixer would be in the software or on this panel. So if I just toggle through my sources on program or hit one and auto to it, change to a mix, do something else, change back to a wipe, mix again, change the sources. All of that functionality gets recorded in the macro until we hit stop. Now you can either go through and take out, change the timing or you can use what has been recorded in order to streamline your own macro to do whatever you like. So if we just and testing it back, we just execute it and you'll see that what we were doing before is then occurring again. Okay. Now I have also written a large number of example macros. I won't run them all now, but if we run macro three, what that will allow us to do is move through all the different types of transition that the mixer offers. Not really as a demonstration of the mixer it's simply if you look at that macro within the system you'll see how many of the functions are, are executed there are example macros for controlling all of the properties of the keyers the downstream keyers the media players etc while a macro is running if it's assigned to a button that button will illuminate to indicate that the macro is running but it is multi-threaded so if you want to run multiple macros simultaneously, you can do that. So we're watching some DVEs. And we can see that the changes are being reflected as they process through the software in the Blackmagic application. The macro software is not dependent on the Blackmagic application it can be run independently. And now our macro is completed, the light is off.
I wanted to quickly show how macros can be used to solve some of the problems that have been raised on the ATM forum. One really interesting problem was where a user wanted to be able to use a stinger for a particular source, but not for every auto transition that they did. So if we were transitioning between our fashion video and our flowers, we'd normally just hit the auto and we'd get whatever we had selected. So if we're on mix, we'll get mix. I could just replace the auto function, but instead for the purpose of this illustration, what I've done is I've created a macro 12. And if we press that button going from the fashion video to bars, then it just does an absolutely standard auto because neither the fashion video nor bars are defined as a special source. The, if we put SDI 3 on preview, then that is defined as a special source. And when we run the macro, you'll see that our defined stinger runs through and then we're back on there. And if we run it again, because we're now going to bars, which isn't a special source, we'll get whatever we had to find. So if we do that again on wipe mode, you'll see that what happens is it changes the stinger, runs the stinger transition, and then switches back to what it was before. So when I run it again to a non-special source, it works with whatever I had set. The user actually had an additional requirement that they wanted two different stingers for two different sources. So if we look at that scenario, where we're going between our two different sources that both require stingers, then we can roll it one way and you see that same stinger transition. But when we run it back, because we're now using the second source, we've got a different stinger that's coming from the second media player on the ATM. So that really just shows how you can just use macros to, to solve the problems that you otherwise would have to press a lot of buttons or drive the software quite quickly in order to achieve. Uh, and that macro is included in the sample pack that you get when you download the free software. The final example I wanted to do in this video concerns integration with Casper CG. Um, Casper CG is a free open source graphics renderer designed for use with broadcast solutions like the ATM. Um, it's based on Flash, so if you've got experience with Flash, you should very easily be able to create the Casper templates that generate graphics. So if we show a, a quick example and we run Macro 7, then you'll see that what happens is a strap rolls out from the, the, the right, displays, and then rolls back again. Uh, that's driven from Casper, but controlled by the macro system. Uh, if we watch it again more closely, you'll see that although it comes on immediately on from Casper, it fades in on the downstream keyer. So we've timed the downstream keyer to occur with Casper, which can be a very useful feature. Um, and very easily you can also see that we can have two different we can provide different data to the same template and just have two buttons to indicate which one you want to use if we have a quick look at that macro in the software we have a look at it we can see that what it does is it sets up the Casper template uh, waits a second just to ensure that Casper's got time to load it. Complicated templates might take a little while to load into Casper. It checks to ensure the downstream keyer is not already on air. And as long as it isn't, it then autos it on. More delay. It then issues a next command. So our template has a number of keyframes that we're going to go through. So we issue a, next, a couple of next commands separated by spaces. The four and a half seconds is the amount of time the strap is displayed. So if you want to display it for more, you up that number. Um, and then as we're animating the strap away, we then execute another DSK auto, which takes the downstream keyer back off air again. And finally, we do issue a Casper stop, which removes the template from 
Casper's memory and effectively makes you ready for the next graphic. Um, quite a little interesting test to do would be to reduce the amount of time that the transition between animating the strap back and taking the DSK off air. So when we now run this macro, you'll see that it comes on at the same speed, displays, but as it animates away, it will fade away rather than going back to the next keyframe and then animating out. I hope you found this an interesting video. I'd really appreciate any feedback, no matter how left field and out there, because this product can grow best with ideas from the ATM user community. Thank you for spending the time watching the video. Fade to black.